If you like this video, please subscribe, like, and go to training.mammothinteractive.com where we have tons of more videos just like this. Hello everyone and welcome back. Previously we learned how to build a game over scene to show our players score. In this lecture we're going to learn how we can show the game over screen when the player dies. So for that we're going to go into our game scene and the death functionality is currently being handled by our canvas objects lives object. Remember it has a script machine that has a lives graph. Here we're checking the lives remaining and if the lives remaining goes to zero we are reset all our variables. We can edit the graph to inspect that this is the case. You'll see on start we have an if statement that checks if lives is less than one then we trigger the restart game event. The restart game event will load a new scene and it will also reset our state or application variables. All right, so instead of resetting the variables and reloading the scene, I'm going to first reset the variables and then load the game over scene. So I'm going to actually change restart game to be called reset variables instead. And let's change that custom event name where it's created. I'm going to delete the load scene node and all of its connecting nodes and instead just directly set my variables back to their initial values. Then once that is done, I'm going to load a new scene. So I'm going to drag off a wire and search for load scene. We're going to just load a scene by its name. And here we can pass in the name of the scene, which is our game over scene. And that is all that we need. So if indeed the lives goes below one, if lives goes to zero, we'll reset our variables and we'll reload the scene being the game over scene. So instead of reloading the same scene, we're loading the game over scene. We can close our graph and we can test this out by pressing play on our game scene. You might remember something will occur that we saw previously. Can you remember what will be logged in the console? Well, let's see what will be logged out by default. There it is. So by default, you'll get an error message. Scene game over scene couldn't be loaded because it has not been added to the build settings or the asset bundle has not been loaded. To add a scene to the build settings, use the menu file build settings. So we have to add the scene to our build settings if we want to be able to use an external scene. So I'm going to go into my Unity toolbar and go to File followed by Build Settings. Here I'm going to add an open scene to my build settings, but this will be the game scene. So instead, first I have to open up my game over scene, so it will be the scene that is open. Then I can go to my File and Build Settings. Then I can click the button Add Open Scenes and that will add the game over scene to the build. Then I can close the build settings and I can go back to my game scene and I can press play. And let's inspect what will happen this time if I lose all of my lives. So I'm going to quickly die and look at that. It takes me to the game over scene where I see my final score zero and I can try to play again. And look at that. I can play again with all of my variable values getting reset. If I die, I see my final score. Let's try to actually get a score value this time, such as at least one. Okay, now we have a score of two. Great. Now we can try to die and look at that. Okay, we see game over and our final score is zero. So our final score is actually not being shown. Why is that the case? Well, if I press play again, all my variable values get reset. The reason is that we actually need to change the order inside of our canvas lives object in the lives graph. You'll notice first we reset our variables, then we load our scene. But we actually want this to be the opposite. I'm going to break my connections by right clicking on the pins. First, I'm going to load my game over scene, which will show me my score. Then I am going to reset my variables after because I need to first show my score variable value and then I can reset the score variable value. So let's close our script graph and try again. I'm going to press play 
and let's try to get a score value of at least one. So there goes the ball. Okay, we have a score of one. Let's increase it some more to two. Okay, great. Now we can die and we'll be taken to the game over screen. All right, our final score is still being set to zero. So it looks like our variable values may be resetting too fast. If we play again, our score goes back to zero. So instead of using the application variable to load the scene, we can also send a variable value to this scene. So we have our game over scene, then the variable values are reset. Let's say we delete that custom event and we just load game over scene. We can check to see if the variable value can be accessed. So let's try out getting a score and then seeing if indeed we can preserve that score for game over. Okay, looks like we can, great. So we can indeed preserve that variable. Then we can reset our variable values, not here, but how about we can reset the variable values if indeed we have started the scene here and this is our first time after our game has been reset. So we can just set this in a different location. So I'm going to reset my variable values in a different location. I can select them all and hit Command X just to here cut them. And then I can close my window. Then we can go to our separate location of where we are setting our playing again. So let's go to our game over scene. Here we have the play again button, which is in the canvas object and it's called play button. This uses the start game script. We can edit this graph and here we have load scene of our game scene. I can paste in my reset variables. So when the button is pressed to play or play again, I can then call reset variables. So I can trigger an event. This is a custom event, meaning that event that I created, which is called reset variables. So this time the variable values will only be reset if the play or play again button is pressed. So let's try again. Let's go back to our game scene and let's press play. This will launch us directly in the game, which we can later test out the init scene as well. Let's get a score value such as one. And look at that. Now we have our game over final score one being shown. We can play again and our variable values will get reset. And let's test out our init scene. So we'll go right back to the very beginning. Welcome play. Let's hit run on that to test out the game from the very start. So I can choose when I want to begin. I can press play. Then I can play the game. So I can reach for the target. Okay, I have one life remaining. I can increase my score. Okay, I died. Let's play again. Let's try to increase our score again this time. All right, so there we go. That was an easy level. We can reach that level. And let's then die by falling off of the platform. And look at that. Our final score is two. We can play again. Awesome. So this tells me we have been able to successfully show a game over screen with the player's score as well when the player dies. We can expand this game a lot more. Of course, this is a prototype. For example, including in the score, we could consider how many lives they have remaining. We could add that to the score. We can also build a script to follow the player with our camera. So instead of having our camera stay in one spot, we can have our camera follow the player. We can also add coins for the player to get more points. And we can add obstacles for the player to be able to lose health in other ways. So there's a lot more expansion that you could do on the game. That does it for this section. I will see you next time. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we're beginning our section on building collectible coins in the game. These will be coins and if the player collides with the coins, then they'll be able to increase their score. So join me in your game scene and we are going to get started. In this lecture, we're going to build a coin prefab, which means a reusable coin object. We can double click on the player to zoom them in 
and then we want to create our coin game object. So I'm going to right click in my hierarchy and create a new 3D object of type cylinder. Then we can double click on the cylinder to zoom in on it, but first let's call it coin. So I'm going to double click and that will zoom in right on that cylinder. We can select our scale tool and on the Y axis scale that coin down, then we can move it to the side. Right, so this way it has more of a coin shape instead of a cylinder shape. Then we can take the rotation tool and we can rotate the coin on the x-axis so that it is standing up. If you go to your game, you can see your coin right there. It looks kind of like a pill right now, but we're going to change its color. You can also change the rotation in the inspector, so I can set it to 90. That way we have a perfect 90 degree angle for the coin. And we can move it forward and back, up and down, as well as left and right. So we're going to spawn these coins dynamically with our script. But first we need to create the reusable coin object. So it will look like this, but let's add on to this coin a material. So I'm going to go into my assets folder. I'm going to right click and create a new folder to store my materials. Then I'm just going to drag all of my materials into that folder so that our project is more organized. Then we can double click on the materials folder to open it. And I'm going to create a new material by right clicking and selecting create and then material. I'm going to call this my coin material. Then in the inspector for that coin material, we're going to go to the albedo property and click on the color box. Here we can select in the color wheel a gold color and then hit close. Then I can take this material and drag it onto the coin in my hierarchy or rather in my scene. So let's just double click on that coin. You can drag it onto the coin in the scene or as well in the inspector. That will change the material of the coin to this gold color. You can also adjust the coin material at any time if you want to experiment with a different shade and that will automatically be applied in the actual coin itself. All right, so choose whatever color works for you to best represent a coin. Once you're done, we now have our coin created, but currently it's just a game object. We have to transform the coin into a prefab. So join me in your assets folder. Here I'm going to right click and create a new folder to store all of my prefabs. I'm going to drag my level platform into that folder and then I'm going to open the folder. So you might remember we have one prefab which is the level platform prefab, this reusable object. We're going to also turn the coin into a prefab. So I'm going to drag the coin from the hierarchy into the project folder specifically prefabs. That will automatically make the coin into a prefab and you can see the coin name is highlighted in blue in the hierarchy which is representing the fact that the coin object is an instance of a prefab. It's not just a regular object, it's actually an instance of a prefab. And in my scene I can now drag as many coin items as I want into my game. We can do this manually or with a script. If you make a change to your prefab, such as you decide you want to change its scale, well, if you go back to your game, you'll notice all the prefabs will automatically be changed as well. All right, so I'm just going to reset the scale because I don't actually want that. Then I'm going to go back and all my coins will be reset. So the benefit of a prefab is you can edit multiple objects at the same time. If we look at our game view, we can see all of our coins. And if we hit play, we can see that some of the coins are being spawned and we can check out if we can interact with them. So let's just start over and then we can inspect if we can actually interact with the coins. So yes, it looks like our player has the ability to bump into these coins. See, so we do have collisions being handled somewhat because the player can indeed bonk against the coins. Let's go ahead and delete the coin prefab instances from our game because we're going to instead spawn our coins via a script. 
So instead of manually placing the coins, which you could do for each level, instead we're going to have a script place the coins. That way there's more randomness in our game and our game is faster to develop. So don't miss the next lecture. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.